Hello everybody, I hope you're having a wonderful day and today I would like to just share with you guys a knife that I ordered about seven and a half months ago. Yeah, this is probably the longest time I've ever waited to receive something and what's in here isn't anything super crazy either. It's just the way things happened. It was a pre-order knife, small batch. The company had to make it, of course, after payment was sent and all of that nonsense. But regardless, it's finally here. This isn't brand spanking new, unfortunately. I am definitely not the first to be showing this off, but I'm very happy to see that it was actually relatively well received by the community, which is pretty cool. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna give you guys my two cents on it. This is actually the first video that I'm recording with my new phone. I don't have any natural light right now because it is uh, late at night and I just have some lights here and on in my living room. But let me know what you guys think about the quality. It's a little bit clearer. Do I sound a little bit better possibly? Just let me know down in the uh, in the comment section. What I carry today at work is this beautiful beast of a budget knife. Uh, this is the Civivi Vexellum. I finally got around to sharpening it and testing this thing. This is a 16 degree edge and it is freaking chef's kiss magnificent. It turns such a large brutish knife into something that is actually kind of a slicing champion, especially with the ergonomics. Oh, fuck. <clears throat> this thing's pretty sweet. So I did uh, do a lot of cardboard destruction testing with it. So the edge isn't as fresh as I would like, but Hey, it's Nitro V, good stuff to sharpen. Um, so AZ USA, Arizona USA, Azusa, whatever you want to call them, Blade Works. And it comes with a sticker, which is really awesome because I love stickers. And this is a pretty sick looking sticker. Look at that. It's a nice looking eagle. Azusa Blade Works. I like it. Love that sticker. It looks really cool. All right, let's get into this. Very simple little box. One of the things, and there's actually like no information at all around it. I wonder how they see what's what. Oh, that's because it's right there. Another little sticker. <laughs> the Colchis. I don't know what this means. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it properly or not. <sighs> and I kind of hate that I don't know already, but let's get to it. Another thing that's a little exciting about this is that this is actually manufactured. Some candy right there. That's it. This is manufactured by Migaron Knives, and I am most definitely on record for loving Migaron's fit and finish in their budget realm because the they tend to bring a lot of value to the sub hundred dollar and even fifty dollar price point. And this thing is forty bucks. Um, I don't know if you could still buy them. I will link down what I can in the description. There were other variations. I got the black and white, of course, because I intended to uh, do some writ dyeing to this. But uh, yeah, this thing looks pretty darn cool. It is a little slick. It's got some oil for traveling sake. <clears throat> One thing I do want to mention, and I don't know if this has been corrected or if Azusa Blade Works has made any statements on you know, updating some information about this. This claims to have a true DLC coating. Now at $40, that is unheard of. It's damn near impossible. Megaron Knives has definitely shown at this point in time that they have the ability to produce real DLC knives. But this really does look like a PVD. Let's go ahead and get that blade out. So front flipper only, <laughs> that was pretty nice. All right, disengagement, plenty of roomy. Oh yeah. Damn, that detent's really good. It's on the lighter side, but it's, it's tuned very well. Again, only front flipper. <clears throat> and that is a pretty interesting looking blade overall, the overall silhouette of it you got some holes in the handles not everybody is crazy about speed holes i understand i get it but that is some weight relieving you have proud thick thick steel liners these steel liners are damn near as thick as the semi-contoured g10 scales huh 
And there's actually another, I just noticed right now, there are little pockets in there for weight relieving as well, besides the holes that you see there. So they've done what they can. Um, definitely I could say that this model, if it were to possibly be brought in at a different price form or format, I think that maybe an XL or like a 1.5 version that had nested steel liners with maybe micarta options or carbon fiber options. Um, I think that'd be pretty cool. I think the Azusa Blade Works is most definitely capable of putting out something like that because this thing feels relatively dense for its overall size. Like this thing is kind of brickish. I do not have my scale with me right now, but this thing does have some good weight to it. And some people may find that, um, I guess, appealing. It might be, have a little bit more substantial weight to it, right? It might feel a little bit better in hand, in pocket, whatever. But for its overall size, I'd say that this is a medium knife. I, don't, I wouldn't really consider this a large knife. Um, but for its overall size, it is relatively weighty. Now, again, looking at this blade, this is a 14C 28N blade. And on the website, it says that this is DLC. I highly, highly doubt that this is real DLC. And only testing will prove that, of course. Uh, I'm not saying that uh, Migron Knives is a liar, or the Azusa Blade Works is a liar, or they did it just to <clears throat> maybe guarantee more sales. I, I don't think that they would be the kind of people to do that. It was most likely just a little misunderstanding. And you know what? I could be completely wrong. Maybe this really is actual DLC, and I just won't know until I actually start shredding through some stuff and seeing how the coating holds up. Now, I have in my collection a couple pieces of DLC. Um, let's see. So I have uh, one piece of shiny DLC and two pieces of Spyderco's typical DLC. Uh, this here is the Manix 2. It is a little smudgy and stuff, and it has some sheen to it from all the uh, amount of abrasion on it. But it's still pretty darn matte looking. This as well. I see some light little scuffs. Some of them are actual deep scratches, but this is a very old blade. A very well loved and very heavily used knife as well. That was a native five. <clears throat> where is. Uh, where'd it go? Here it is. So this is a true DLC, a polished DLC over a soft satin, I guess if you want to call it. It's very shiny. When it's all freshly cleaned and everything, it actually has kind of a bronzish hue to it. It's beautiful. I think it looks great. This is the Kanu Knives Compadre. I will be working on the review of this. Uh, it's going to be short and sweet, just like this knife. Um, plenty of good to say about this thing, so just stay tuned for that. But this is what a, uh, a polished DLC looks like. Now, let me show you what a typical PVD looks like. I have a lot of PVD in my collection uh, from a lot of different brands, which I think would be helpful to show off the variation. There are different finishes that could be applied to PVD. Um, some are cheap, some are premium feeling, nice and thick looking. Um, some have a stone wash. Some are very matte and kind of plain looking. So this is right here, the Cochise up here. This is a very heavily, heavily used uh, CGRB Pyrite Light. This is a PVD that has been used so damn much, it's actually semi-polished now because of how much uh, abrasive has been on it going through cardboard and things like that. Here we have the Elementum Button Lock 1, I guess, the Gravity knife and as you can see this is matte but it has a stone washing over it and i think it's very attractive as well uh here we have the kubi hound this is another stone washing pvd it's nice nice and well applied now let's get some other little things <clears throat> i got some cheap pvd and then i have some not so cheap PVD. 
Okay, this is a much nicer coating. Like this thing just feels a whole lot more quality. And while it is not applied to a super expensive knife, this has got to be one of the most durable PVDs I have experienced. This is the Vosti Knives Acorn. This is the regular size, not the mini. Um, so it's all black, black micarta, black PVD, and um, bronzish matte accents right there and the lanyard loop right there. Um, this knife has seen a shit ton, a literal butt ton of pocket time and actual use. And as you can see, there really isn't much variation and uh, in that coating there, maybe the tiniest, tiniest bit, maybe that's just a little bit of oil smudge right there. But this thing is in pretty outstanding condition for how much it's been used. So as you can see here, there's a whole lot of variation when it comes to the quality of PVD. This is a 30 little a $30 budget knife that I use as a size comparison knife because it's I find a lot of value in it. This is the Free Tiger FT2103. Uh, is it 2103? Yeah, 2103, that's the exact model. There are models that are like five, six bucks cheaper. Those have uh, just a different look, but this one has a very thick PVD coating on it. And this has seen a lot of pocket time and a lot of actual use. And because of how thick that coating is, um, it's held up really, really well. So what I'm just saying by showing all this nonsense off is that this really does look just like a PVD. I've never seen a DLC that looks quite like this. So chances are that was an accident and it really should be updated because I don't know about you guys, but I've never seen real DLC that's applied to a good actual knife blade material for 40 bucks. I mean, even still, but if it even if it is just a PVD for 40 bucks, this thing peel of uh, peels. This thing feels pretty darn good. I do like it overall. It feels top quality for the actual price it feels like it's worth more than the actual price and while this is just an unboxing i will say that based off of my past experience handling uh, a couple things from migron in their budget section this is definitely on par with that stuff and i was very pleased with that stuff perfectly centered and i know it's all black so a little bit difficult to see there's a white backspacer so that might help a little bit See if there's any pivot movement. That's beautiful. Nothing there for now. That could always change in the future, of course. Side to side, beautiful. Up and down, wonderful. Pivot movement, excellent. That is pretty freaking nice. I do like that quite a bit. Now this pocket clip here. Uh, Megaron has been known to make very, very nice minimalistic I don't know, some people are kind of tired of that word, but this isn't just a simple pocket clip, like a simple like popsicle style pocket clip. Well, it does look very simple. Just hear me out for a second. There's a good bit of room under that pocket clip, not for super thick, durable pants, but I'm talking standard jeans, shorts, denim, khaki material. Uh, even if you wanted to put it in slacks, I mean, this thing does have a little bit of weight, so it might weigh you down a little bit. But in standard jean material, that is ample room. And check out the ramp to that. that is, there's just so much ramp to that. And then to release it as well, that's pretty healthy. I do definitely like that. There are two T8s for the pocket clip, and it looks like this is a full T8 knife. Thank you, Megaron. This thing uh, is a one and done, one Torx bit and done knife to do basic maintenance um and so yeah there's two of them there another thing too if you look at this pocket clip it actually sorry bump the camera there um it's wide up here and then it kind of cinches and tapers down and then flares out just a tad bit there it's not super popsicle looking it has a little bit of designiness to it i think it is perfect perfectly applied to this overall design it's simple it's nothing crazy uh, Migron has been known to make 
steel pocket clips, milled steel pocket clips, or titanium ones. I don't have a magnet here with me. Well, let's see if this works, actually. This is a magnet driver. Am I feeling anything? I don't feel like any actual magnetism. So chances are that is titanium, which is pretty nice, you know, for, for the overall price. But uh, yeah, let's take a look at this blade again. Very simple, there's not much logos. There's this little eagle looking dude here on the pivot. I think it looks pretty nice. And there is actually a collar as well around there. All right, so the unboxing and first impressions is essentially over. But at this point in time, I'm actually going to do a disassembly. So if you guys want to check out the internals of this to see what I think about it, stick around. <clears throat> I left my nice driver at work. So we're just gonna use this long dinky thing. Now I got a T8 in there. So I love Megaron's hardware. Everything is just damn near perfect about it. The threads are freaking butter. The depth and the tooling of their screws are essentially perfection. I, I know it sounds like I'm paid by these freaking guys, but absolutely not. I'm just uh, a happy customer. I definitely am a consumer of Migaron knives and a lot of the stuff that they have produced, I just, even in their premium side, there are so many things that I wish I could get a hold of. I just don't have the funds when things become available or when I do have the funds, I end up spending it on something else that interests me more in the moment. So, and there goes the pivot. <clears throat> now the hardware I believe to be steel, it very well could be titanium, but I highly, highly doubt it at this price point. Here's a little collar. Let's see if I can pull it out. Yep, a little collar right there. And you could see the like the drippings or something of the actual coating that's applied to this. But it's very well evenly coated as well as you know, on all the hardware. Let's get this, get the pocket clip off now. Yeah, this, uh, this thing is just a breeze to take off. Nothing has any sort of like unnecessary amount of thread locker or anything annoying like that. A little black smudge right there. <clears throat> okay, nice and simple on the inside. Nothing, nothing wild, nothing crazy. I am hoping for um, like a polished bearing surface on the inside. That's something that I would expect coming from Migaron. Uh, Migaron is known for also doing uh, hardened steel races on their tie models, which I think is an absolute must. Let me try to just wiggle this thing out. Is it a captive pivot? It might be. Uh, they might do it similarly to how uh, Civivi does it as well. And while I have this thing apart, I could see potentially what kind of bearings I could put in here. Do I have all my bearing card stuff? Shit, I don't have it here with me. Whatever, not a big deal. So looking at the liner side, it is beautifully milled. Everything is nice and clean. Um, I will say that is a little disappointing that the surface right there isn't polished. Not the end of the world, really not that big of a deal. Um, here is a stop pin right there. You can see all the other larger holes for weight relieving right there. Here's a little backspacer piece, very well machined as well. Nice and pearly white. Here we have ceramic bearings in Delrin, or is it, well, it's like a plastic basically. Yeah, nice little bearings right there. Nothing crazy, nothing wild. In there, it looks like it's decently finished. I wouldn't call it a polish, but... 
get a better look at the machining of the blade overall. This is something that I do intend to do a little bit more often. All right. So that's something that is also a little disappointing. So the surface of this is like semi-polished. But if you look down in there, you can see that there's still some of that black coating that's still on the surface right there. Nothing in the world, not the biggest deal, but it's still there. It's like a little shadow, nothing crazy. Check out that detent hole right there. Nice and well machined. It has the tiniest little lip around it. Nice, I like the little touch. The detent track is already worn in a little bit. It's just right on the surface. It'll get smoother, smoother over time. Lock face geometry, that looks beautiful. Very healthy, not choppy, not scratched up in any weird direction. And that is really about it. Now, while I do have this out and in this position, I do wanna share with you guys that the execution, and I don't know if this was you know, a actual design choice or just Migron's execution, but that plunge grind is pretty freaking terrible. Um, I, as a sharpener that would want to get the maximum amount of performance out of a blade like this, and especially of this blade shape, um, I would definitely want to bring that down to at least an 18 degree edge. If I bring it down to an 18 degree edge, I'm gonna grind off this whole shoulder right here. And that kind of freaking sucks. So what I'm gonna end up doing is I, I I mean this is a forty dollar knife. It's gonna stay in the collection. I'll modify it. You know, have a good time with it. Do a bunch of testing. But I'm probably gonna take my Dremel and just uh, let me see if I can get something to point at this thing with. I have a pen right here. So what I'm probably gonna end up doing is focus. Damn it! All right. Yeah, I'm probably gonna end up like literally removing with a little circle Dremel like a hole right here, like a half circle, just removing this area right here because I want to avoid the shouldering. I want to avoid all that stuff that I'm sharpening. So if I bring the live edge to start right here, I have all of this life right here, all this life right here, essentially to sharpen away to actually get the maximum amount of life out of this blade. And as a consumer, this shit matters. It does. So, Migron, you gotta get better at the execution. Azusa Blade works. This is something that should be, uh, I guess, emphasized a little bit more when it comes to sending over the CAD file, the, the final design, because this is a cool little budget knife. And you can absolutely extend the life of it and maintaining the look overall by including a sharpening choil, even this, the tiniest, tiniest little sharpening choil there. I know that might take a little bit more time and more precision work, just charge accordingly. It's a $40 knife. So if this thing had what I would consider to be a perfect sharpening choil, charge me 50, charge me 55 bucks. I'd still buy it. This is a pretty good freaking knife. It is a little, a little thick behind the edge, but because of the amount of usable blade length uh, you have, the shape of it, it's damn near a straight. Do I have anything flat? Yeah, I have the box right here. Yeah, that's a straight one cliff. Like, that's, that's absolutely flat. That's nice and flat, nice and straight, zero belly. This thing is meant to go to work. This thing is meant to shred shit up. You know, like, this is a really good design, and I do think it deserves a little bit more praise, definitely. Because a lot of the other content creators that I watched that, uh, you know, made content on this knife, uh, they didn't have a whole lot of good stuff to say, but also didn't really add a whole lot of, you know, like positive criticism towards it, or uh, what is it called? Um, you know, just like helping out to make it, you know, a little bit better. I do definitely enjoy the fact that they do this similarly to how Civivi does it with a little notch milled out of the scale material. It's durable material enough, G10, it's good stuff right to keep the pivot nice and centered little to no play that is quite nice and the reassembly of this thing should be 
pretty freaking easy. What I'm seeing here, what I'm feeling here, is definitely a really good freaking knife. I do definitely like it quite a bit, but I will say uh, for all you're getting here, uh, this is a steel. This is honestly a real steel. If if you don't care about sharpening choils and you want to keep the factory angle, go right ahead. I, I am no one to tell you anything else, but just of my personal picky ass preference, that sharpening troll there would take this thing from like an 8 to a 10. It would just be that much better because I, as a sharpener, would be able to confidently throw this into my system, a couple quick little passes, and just get back to work and enjoying the knife and the design for what it is, right? This is a design that's meant to go to work and to be something substantial and comfy and simple enough to operate in the pocket. Uh, I mean, just... Look at the, the lock bar axis. That's beautifully smoothened down. It's very comfortable. There's nothing weird and wacky going on. Execution, freaking beautiful. The coating on everything is excellent. It's, it's very well coated. The machining of the G10, everything feels nice and crisp, but not um, jagged, not rough. Like, these are very well finished parts. Um, the, uh, the bearings here and the ceramic detent ball, this little dude right here, I mean, you have so much value in this. The design of the pocket clip here, it's, you know, off of the actual unit itself. You could see just how good of a design that is. And it's just so darn simple. You don't really get to appreciate it until you actually get it in hand, get it in your pocket, in and out a couple times, and use it in your day-to-day. -day. And I think that the only thing really holding this uh, overall design back is just that little thing right there. To be able to sharpen this thing and put a sick, aggressive, low angled edge on here would just be a dream, an absolute dream. And for somebody like me, um, I have a little Dremel set and I can go and make a little notch there. It's going to take all of a minute out of my life, right? Not that big of a deal. But you know what? There are some people out there that do not have those tools and don't want to mark up a coated blade. And when I do that, I'm going to have to live with how it looks. It's a $40 knife. Boohoo. Not a big deal, right? But that's just, that's the one, that's really the only genuine criticism I have towards this is that sharpening troll there. This thing is pretty darn sweet. I do like it quite a bit. I'm very excited to start using it, seeing if I could put skiffs or maybe some thick washers potentially. I don't know. I think it'd be pretty cool to see how it interacts with just a front flipper only. The jimping on this is well enough for the detent strength. I think it's very appropriate. It's very comfortable. I could even do the inner, uh, you know, side knuckle rollover thing. I could do that too very comfortably. I think this was tuned very well from the factory. I do want to mess with the tension a little bit uh, to see if maybe a little bit stronger would, would be a little bit more satisfying to me. Um, or maybe just leave it as is. Um, finer jimping would be, you know, always appreciated, but for what it is, I think it's appropriate enough. So that's it. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, go ahead and leave a like down below. If you are subscribed, thank you so much. I appreciate all your support and your patience, of course. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing because I play more videos and content coming you guys this way. With that being said, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.